You might think that with a few billion dollars, a high-tech lab, and some futuristic gear, anyone could turn themselves into the real-life Tony Stark. But what if I told you? That's not even close to the whole story. Because the real challenge? It's not just what you can build. It's what your body can survive. Today, we're diving deep into the science behind Iron Man. We're talking armor feasibility, real-world cost, portable fusion reactors, and the ultimate question, could a real human even survive wearing that suit? Let's start with the basics, money. In the Marvel Universe, Tony Stark isn't just rich. He's by an entire country rich. His estimated net worth, around $917 billion. That would make him one of the richest fictional characters ever, more than the GDP of most countries. But it's not just about what's in his bank account. Stark's empire is built on Stark Industries, a company that dominates defense, aerospace, robotics, AI, and clean energy. In the real world, each of those industries takes decades of specialization. Stark not only runs all of them, he innovates in all of them. And get this, he didn't inherit that power. He reinvented it. Stark transformed a traditional weapons manufacturer into a futuristic R&D powerhouse. Every product he makes redefines entire industries. His Malibu mansion, valued at $125 million. And it's basically a tech fortress, complete with AI systems, hidden labs, automated defenses, and an ocean view. Just maintaining that thing probably runs around $10 million a year. But all of that is pocket change compared to his greatest creation, the Iron Man suit. Let's take the Mark VII armor, one of the most iconic versions. Made from a gold titanium alloy, it's already a fortune in raw materials. Add in repulsor systems, onboard weapons, a holographic HUD, targeting sensors, environmental protection, and we're talking about $1.5 billion per suit. And Stark doesn't just have one. Advanced models, like the nanotech-based Mark 50, could cost upwards of $7 billion each. That's more than some countries' GDPs. And yet, that's just the outer shell. At the core of everything, literally, is an arc reactor. That glowing circle in Stark's chest? It's a portable nuclear fusion device. Roughly the size of a hockey puck, it powers the entire suit and his house. Sounds brilliant, right? Fusion is the same process that powers the sun. You fuse lightweight atoms like hydrogen, and boom, you get an insane amount of clean, almost limitless energy. It's like harnessing a star in your chest. There's just one problem. We still can't do it here on Earth. Even today's experimental reactors, like the ITER project in France, cost billions and take up entire city blocks. They require temperatures hotter than the sun, over 150 million degrees Celsius, and must be kept stable with massive magnetic fields cooled near absolute zero. Now imagine shrinking all that down into a tiny, wearable, stable energy source that won't vaporize the user. That's not just science fiction, that's magic. Some fans estimate a real arc reactor would cost around $36 million. But just to develop the science, we're talking trillions in research. And that's assuming it's even possible, which right now, it's not. Oh, and remember the palladium poisoning subplot in Iron Man 2? Yeah, that's real. Palladium is highly toxic. Long-term exposure can damage your liver, kidneys, and nervous system. So not only is the arc reactor impossible, it's also deadly. But let's dream for a second. Let's say someone does it. The money, the science, the engineering, done. The suit works. The arc reactor is stable. Now comes the real question. Let's talk physics. The Iron Man suit weighs about 750 kilograms. That's like strapping an entire car to your body. Even with servos and propulsion systems helping you move, 
your muscles, joints, and bones would be under constant strain. Just standing upright would feel like holding a full squat all day. But that's not even the worst part. As soon as you fly, the laws of physics become your biggest enemy. In the movies, Stark pulls off high-speed maneuvers, sharp turns at altitude, rapid stops, mid-air flips, all while flying faster than sound. But those moves generate massive G-forces. Fighter pilots, the elite of the elite, can barely handle 9 Gs for a few seconds before passing out. That's when blood rushes away from the brain, causing a blackout called G-lock, G-force induced loss of consciousness. Now, imagine pulling 12 or 15 Gs in combat, like Stark does. That's enough to crush organs, rupture blood vessels, and cause brain damage. Even with the suit absorbing some of the force, the human body would get wrecked from the inside out. And that's assuming you're flying in a straight line. Add in sharp turns, sudden stops, or barrel rolls, and you're now dealing with deadly inertia. Your organs would slam against your rib cage like they're in a blender. The suit might protect you from missiles, but it can't protect you from your own biology. Here's something that often gets overlooked. Tony Stark doesn't just wear the suit. He controls it, like it's an extension of his body. Sometimes with hand gestures, other times with a neural interface that reads his brain signals in real time. So, how close are we to that? Actually, we've made some progress. Brain-computer interfaces do exist. Some paralyzed patients can move robotic limbs using only their thoughts. But today's systems are still slow, imprecise, and require intense calibration. Controlling something as complex as the Iron Man suit, with its propulsion, combat, targeting, environmental systems, and AI, would need a brain-machine interface that's decades ahead of what we have now. And then there's the cognitive overload. Even today, fighter pilots have to manage dozens of inputs while making split-second decisions. They train for years to handle that stress. Now, imagine adding AI voice commands, 360-degree threat detection, weapon systems, and navigation, all in real time. The human brain just can't process that much at once. No matter how smart or fit you are, your reaction time won't keep up with the Iron Man suit demands in a real combat scenario. All right, let's suspend disbelief. The suit works, the arc reactor is safe, all the tech is real. What would it take to become the pilot? The training would be nothing short of brutal. You'd need incredible physical strength just to withstand the pressure of wearing the suit. You'd need elite level cardiovascular endurance to handle extended use, lightning fast reflexes like a fighter pilot. And you'd need mental stamina to make life or death decisions under overwhelming stress. Your training routine, daily high intensity functional workouts, core and joint strengthening, advanced VR flight simulations, cognitive conditioning to handle sensory overload. Even elite athletes, astronauts, and special forces soldiers might fall short. Why? Because this isn't about peak fitness. It's about everything at once. Strength, speed, stamina, intelligence, and nerves of steel. And that doesn't even touch on the psychological toll. Tony Stark operates under constant pressure. Every mission is life or death. He carries the weight of global responsibility and still pushes forward. That kind of resilience doesn't come from the gym. It comes from the mind. And that might be the most super thing about him. Being Iron Man isn't just about building a suit. It's about breaking every limit of biology, physics, and engineering all at once. The arc reactor, as described in the films, complete science fiction. We're likely decades, if not centuries, away from miniaturizing nuclear fusion. The suit, even if fully built, would cost trillions and still probably kill the wearer. And even if we solve all the tech issues, the human body remains the biggest barrier. But maybe the most powerful part of Stark's story isn't the technology, it's what it represents. A symbol of human imagination, our refusal to accept limits, 
and our obsession with turning the impossible into reality. So here's a question for you. What do you think is the biggest barrier to becoming Iron Man? The money, the tech, or the human body? Drop your answer in the comments, smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't yet, and hit the bell so you don't miss future deep dives like this. Because here, we turn sci-fi into real science. See you in the next one.